Before you start programming, the first thing you should do is outline how the algorithm of your program with a flow diagram, something like this. So the big thing up here is this main. We start there. Every time we start a function or end a function, we have these start these ovals that indicate the start or stop. So here we've got the main being defined, and then we've got the halt of the main program down here. Similarly, we've got a subroutine over here. It's got a start as well as an end. Now, those tell us the beginning and ending of functions, so you want to look for the, you want to create those. Then you've got this trapezoidal uh, shape here. The trapezoid tells us that we're going to be looking for input or output from the user. Um, so, for example, we might start off with a, hey, enter a number, like 18 here, and the user enters 18, and then the pro the program is going to do some processing based on that number. The next uh, shape, this di diamond shape over here, is a decision. It tell it's a branch call, which says, hey, if this condition is true, we're going to do one thing. If this condition is false, we'll do something else. So let's say you're looking for a number that's odd. And so if it's odd, you're going to do one thing. If it's even, you're going to do another thing. And so if in this case we'd say, okay, hey, I have an odd, even number, so I'm going to say, I don't remember what the condition was. But let's say I go to the true, then I'm going to run these two processes here and then skip over that subroutine in the middle. I'm going to come back to that in a second. And then the other option is if my condition was false, I'm going to run my subroutine, which is going to do a subroutine call. So that's, a, that's what a branch does. It tells us which direction we're going to go. And it, there can be any infinite number of things that we're going to branch to and from. What a subroutine call does, it says, hey, someone else already wrote this code, or I wrote this code somewhere else, and I want to use this again. So let's say we had a swap function, or a net negate, or we had an addition, or some other subroutine that did some specialized task that we've already written. We could say, all right, I'm going to call the subroutine. You're going to perform an operation on my data, and you're going to run the subroutine. The subroutine is going to return at the end of a thing, and then move on to the next process. I've been using the word process, but I actually haven't defined it yet, but that's these nondescript rectangles here. So that might be where you perform an operation such as A plus B equals C, and or you can, what would be another nice easy benign one? You can shift some bits around, or you can complement some bits. So these are some really easy basic operations that are part of the, the computer. Finally, I want to make a distinction between branching and looping. So this is here is a conditional branch. It tells us, hey, either go this way or that way. A loop tends to say, hey, your condition hasn't been met or has been met, so let's loop back around and do some things over again. So this branch here is what we call a loop branch, where if it's false, it's going to go back up to the top and start all over again, whereas if it's true, it's going to keep moving on. So that's, that's a style of branch. Um, and we're going to talk about that more in a future lecture.